So welcome again to another edition of Tech Talk. My name is Brent Brando. I handle all the import export here at Global Knowledge. Uh, we're here today in the catacombs of Global Knowledge Tower, speaking with Randy Russell, the uh, Director of Certification at Red Hat, and a friend of the show, John Walter, a Solutions Architect Training and Certification at Red Hat. Um, and today we're going to just be talking about some of the common questions that we have coming in frequently uh, you know, via sales, via whatever um, that our potential students, current students have about Red Hat and Red Hat technology. So we'll, uh, we'll get jumped in here, and I guess, Randy, I'll start with you. Um, could you give us an overview kind of, of Red Hat certification? Right. So the Red Hat certification program is the program that certifies IT professionals as having skills and knowledge in the use of our products. We have a, a separate certification program that certifies things like software solutions and hardware. That's a different thing. This is about people and about certifying their skills and knowledge and ability to use our technology. So the core of our certification program is Red Hat Certified System Administrator. And then we build on that with Red Hat Certified Engineer and Red Hat Certified Architect and Infrastructure. We also have a developer track that starts with Red Hat Certified Enterprise Application Developer, which moves on to Red Hat Certified Enterprise Microservices Developer, and then can actually lead to Red Hat Certified Architect in Enterprise Applications. We also have a designation called Red Hat Certified Specialist, which covers a number of technologies that we have in our portfolio. Cool. Um, so, Talk a little bit about how the certification program connected is uh, connected to Red Hat's training program. I'm mean, obviously you know we're global knowledge, so we do training. So yeah. right. Well, they're actually very closely connected. And what you would find is that a lot of IT companies, the degree of connection can vary. Our training and our certification are actually very tightly coupled. Now, it is possible for somebody to take any Red Hat exam without necessarily taking our training. We. Uh, we open the door for everybody. If you already have those skills that are hard won by just using the technology in the field, you are welcome to take the exam. Most people elect to actually take the training, and that's actually very wise because it accelerates the process for actually gaining those skills and knowledge. Plus, we work closely with the team that develops that training. That's something that we actually do in tandem for all of our offerings, where we're not working in isolation, but we're actually working quite closely together so that we ensure that all of our exam objectives for any one of our exams is covered by a hands-on lab activity in the corresponding training. That's really critical because one of the big differentiators about Red Hat certification is that every one of our exams is 100% hands-on performance-based. So if you're going to be thrown in the deep end of the pool and told actually do stuff as opposed to answering questions about stuff, it's useful to have training that has prepared you for that by being hands-on training. Right, because the Red Hat's training, Red Hat certifications are probably a departure from what most folks are used to. Very often, yeah. yes. Okay, cool. Um, well, so we know the Red Hat Certified Engineer has uh, undergone some changes with the release of Rail 8. Um, can you talk a little bit about those changes, what we guys have got going on? And maybe, John, you could kind of join, kind of chime in with, um, you know, what, what are some new features coming on? Sure. Uh, yeah. Right. So, um, so the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 features, I'll let John get into that, but we made a decision that was not necessarily driven by the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 feature set and really more driven by directions in the industry. And so the change that we chose to make with the release of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 is that we have changed the focus of the Red Hat Certified Engineer credential to automation of Linux administration, okay? And the reason that we have made that change is that there's a huge difference in the IT landscape of today versus 20 years ago when we started the Red Hat Certified Engineer RHCE program. Uh, at that time, you know, Linux was very much used as an edge of network platform. This is where you ran your web server. Maybe you ran your, your mail server or your mail gateway. Maybe you did depart departmental file and print. 
it was not where you necessarily ran your mission critical application that you bet the farm on. And of course, there's a lot of other developments that did not happen in, in, in IT until some years later. Well, Red Hat, the company and its products, came to be more enterprise focused. This is where you were going to run your mission critical uh, enterprise applications. This is where you were going to bet the farm on the success or failure of these workloads that you were deploying. And so things changed over time, but then they've also changed in scale. How has that happened? Well, every one of us probably sitting in this room has in our hands, in our pocket, in a purse, a smartphone, right? We live by them. Everybody lives by these now. And we manage our lives, we manage our purchases, we manage so many things through technology now that if you extend that, you start to realize that there's just an enormous amount of companies that have undergone digital transformation and that are doing business in a very, very different way. What that has introduced is a scale challenge, okay? Because every aspect of having that app on your phone, having that connectivity, having the ability to book your hotel or um, you know, get a plumber to your house or whatever, all of those things require a lot of technology behind them. And what that has introduced is a level of scale that simply is not going to be manageable by having a, an army of people typing at their keyboards, automating, you know, and not automating, but performing tasks manually it simply isn't possible with the scale anymore. So you have to have automation to keep up with the, where the demand is. And so we made the decision that with this new release, we were going to make the focus automation, principally using Ansible, which is the technology that is how Red Hat does um, automation, but then also using shell scripting, which is a very good complement to Ansible. And so that's a change we've made. Uh, it is a difference, it's a bit of a, a jump, but we really feel that we are answering the market need by doing that. And then I think for the product side, we've moved in the direction I think that really complements the changes we made to the RHCE, right? So, um, you know, we talk about automation, we talk about Ansible a lot. Now, as part of your REL subscription, you actually get access to Ansible Engine, which is where you can actually create those playbooks. You run those automation uh, scripts, right? So you actually get access to that for free as part of your subscription. You don't get support for it. You do need to buy a separate subscription for that. But um, you know, now customers are able to kind of dip their toes into this automation platform um, you know, right, out, right out of the gate. Um, on top of that, we, we've also made some other tools um, free as part of your subscription as well. So things like Red Hat Insights, um, things like uh, Cockpit is a, a tool that, that has been a part of RHEL for quite a while, but there's now a lot more emphasis as far as here. Now I can manage systems. Uh, if I'm not a, a Linux admin, I can now manage some systems with this kind of web UI. It makes it a little bit easier for you. Um, and then containers. Containers is a really, really big uh, uh, kind of buzzword within the industry right now. You know, we have something like OpenShift, which allows you to manage containers at scale. Um, you know, things like Docker have been around, or Kubernetes have been around for quite some time, but um, now we are shipping container tools, things like Podman, Builda, um, as part of RHEL 8, and we're supporting them. And so, um, you know, this gives our customers the ability to kind of dip their toes into automation, into container tools, um, all from a, a supported side um, before they, you know, really build out and scale towards something like, you know, Ansible Tower or towards OpenShift. Gotcha. So for experienced admins, uh, you know, what training options does Red Hat offer to get them up to speed on Rail 8? So, you know, I mentioned a, a few of those new features. Yeah. We actually created a course that, that really is, is sort of a feature highlight. It's um, the, the SKU is RH354, but it's really um, new features in Rel 8 for experienced administrators, right? Not every administrator needs to go through the RHCSA every single time we release a new operating system. You know, that course itself really establishes a baseline in, in between RHEL 7 and RHEL 8, not a whole lot has changed fundamentally. We made a, a really big change between RHEL 6 and RHEL 7 with how we do system management with System D. We haven't really, you know, changed the landscape so fundamentally between these two versions. And so, you know, we developed what is a three-day course that really just highlights all these new features. So you'll get, you know, some exposure to um, uh, some changes we made as far as package management is concerned. You'll get some experience working with the container tools, things like Insights, things like Cockpit. Um, and, and then we highlight some of the kind of under the hood changes as well. Like here's uh, uh, how we do time management now. Here's how we do 
um, here, here's what the new kernel is. So we highlight, you know, here are all kind of the high level under the hood features from, you know, a, a kernel level, so to speak, as well. So, you know, it's something that's, I, I think, um, really beneficial for those that especially are maybe still on RHEL 6 or RHEL 7 and aren't sure when they should make the transition to RHEL 8 to kind of dip their toes in the water before they download it and, and deploy it into production. Okay, you mentioned cockpit, and that's that's a good uh, segue. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? So Randy already yeah. mentioned, you know, yeah. everyone has uh, cell phones in their pockets, right? And we can't expect everyone within uh, every organization to have those like baseline system administration skills. Cockpit is a web UI. Um, if you're familiar with something like Red Hat Satellite, it's a way of doing system management at scale. Cockpit is almost a way of doing system management at at the opposite of scale, right? And and it allows you to sort of operationalize a lot of these system administration tasks without having to know what commands you need to run. And the nice thing about it is it actually is accessible through a web UI that you can access on your phone. So it's, it's um, you know, mobile compliance. So somebody who just needs to, you know, check on a, a specific file and see who owns it. Maybe they need to create a user. They don't need to know, hey, the user ad fe feature is this, you know, something like that. Um, they can go into a, a web page and basically click on a system and they can create a user just with the click of a button. Um, they, they don't need to understand basic Linux system administration tasks and they can do it from their cell phone if they want to. Well, and just to expand on that, <laughs> consider this, is that what was once unthinkable has now happened. Something like Microsoft <laughs> SQL Server will now run on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, okay? That's a big change, right? And what that means is that we have an entirely new audience now coming to the platform that has a different set of expectations about how they interact with it. Now, if I was talking to somebody on the street who said, yeah, you work with Red Hat, you know, what do I need to do to start working with that technology? I would probably encourage them to still dig in and learn all of those skills that we have always been teaching them. But the reality is, is that there are people who are, again, being thrown into the deep end of the pool and told, hey, we are now going to be running SQL Server on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you better learn it. And something like Cockpit gives them a way to operationalize that without necessarily having to go all in and get deep on that. Yeah. Sure, and, and just to piggyback on kind of you know what you're talking about, what are the skills and certifications that you're seeing a big demand for right now? Well, you know, so we always see a lot of interest and demand for the Red Hat Enterprise Linux core system administration skills. So, you know, Red Hat certified system administrator is by far and away the one that, you know, the largest number of people are going for. Uh, Red Hat certified engineer remains also a very solid performer. In addition to those, there's an enormous amount of interest in Ansible, which is you know, one of the reasons that we also were able to make that choice to make RHCE very much about Ansible, but we have additional follow-on courses and exams that dig deeper into Ansible. And then OpenShift is a huge area of interest right now. Um, you know, within the last uh, year to 18 months, I've seen the interest in that grow enormously. Earlier this year, we released OpenShift version four, and I think that is really fueling a lot of new interest in, uh, in, in OpenShift as the way that Red Hat does containers. As, as John mentioned, containers is that new deployment paradigm that a lot of the industry is going towards. And so those are where we see a lot of the, the interest is still around Red Hat Enterprise Linux, also Ansible because you know it, it is that automation engine and then OpenShift because it is about containers and so many organizations are, are getting that, that's really the future of their deployments. Gotcha. So um, as we're you know, nearing the end of 2019, you know, what, what are some things you guys are excited about? What are some things you see coming you know, from Red Hat in, in 2020? I mean, definitely with the acquisition with IBM, the, yeah. the, the cloud play is becoming bigger and bigger and, and OpenShift is a huge part of that. You guys, IBM, I didn't, I didn't know anything yeah, about Yeah, I think uh, the last time we so, did yeah. one of these talks, it had just <laughs> hit, I think. Yeah, um, so that's going to secret. So, yeah. so that is, that's fine. Tell, no yeah. Tell no one. Tell no one. But yeah, so you know, their whole reasoning between, b behind the acquisition was really um, 
this huge hybrid cloud landscape, right? And and Red Hat has always been known to be this kind of vendor agnostic, plays well with others, um, you know, company and, and platform, whether it was from RHEL or, uh, you know, satellite, all these different, uh, you know, everything within our portfolio. And, and OpenShift is the same, right? So, you know, we have partnerships with Microsoft. You can deploy OpenShift into Microsoft Azure. Um, obviously with Amazon, they're a huge partner of ours. Um, and, and IBM has a, a lot of that backing as well. They have a huge footprint in that cloud uh, you know, landscape. And so I see a lot of, uh, from a, you know, general corporate standpoint, uh, a lot of moves that we're going to make as far as OpenShift, and that's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, from a training perspective, um, you know, you mentioned OpenShift 4. There's a lot of really cool features that come with OpenShift 4, and, and I'm excited that we are, uh, you know, developing curriculum around some of these very specific things. So things like Service Mesh, which is, um, you know, essentially a, a, if you're familiar with Istio, it's it's a, on the microservices side. You know, microservices is sort of the, the next step in that containers paradigm. And so, and so we're going to have curriculum that's developed all around, you know, here's how you actually build your microservices using something like Service Mesh. Um, with Also with OpenShift 4, something called Operators, and I think down the road we'll have a, a course, Operators is essentially a way of, of automating the entire life cycle of your OpenShift, whether it's deployment or your, your actual applications, you know, all of the above, all the day two operations that are a part of OpenShift as well. And so, um, you know, I'm really excited from that standpoint. And, and then, uh, on the Ansible side, we'll actually be releasing a uh, Microsoft Ansible uh, course. So, you know, Ansible is really, really interesting, and it's become a part of all of our products, largely because it is able to automate all kinds of different things, whether it's different use cases or different products, right? And so, um, you know, those are that are going to be provisioning operating systems. Those are going to be managing uh, network devices, managing different cloud vendors, um, whether it's provisioning, configuration management, application deployment. Those are all the different use cases that Ansible can be a part of. And so we're actually developing a course right now that we'll be releasing soon uh, around how to automate uh, and manage Windows devices. And so I think that will be really, really interesting. This will be kind of our first course that is largely not running on RHEL. And so that's going to be uh, really interesting and kind of exciting for us. But, you know, definitely that's that's a whole customer base that we have not really gotten to interact with largely. And, and you know, you mentioned the the MS SQL, you know, now we're playing well with, you know, Microsoft and all these other vendors that, you know, whenever I started at Red Hat, were sort of seen not as the enemy, but it was like, oh, you guys work with Windows? And we're like, no, 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 we're RHEL. We're, we're Linux, all right? And so now we're getting to play with those, those other vendors. And so I'm excited about that stuff. Well, so, you know, just to piggyback on that is that, uh, you know, first of all, with respect to IBM, I think one of the things that your audience and, you know, and our audience should understand is that there, this is going to drive an enormous amount of demand for people with Red Hat skills beyond where it is today. You know, I think it's going to be a real opportunity for a lot of people uh, to move into a different area of IT than they maybe have before or perhaps to actually get into IT. So I think that's going to be very interesting. With respect to the Ansible piece, John said something that's very important is that Ansible is not strictly something that you find in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It is something that can be used for automating any number of things. And so one of the things that's really interesting about Ansible is that it allows different parts of an IT organization to coalesce around a single approach to automation. Not just your, your Linux sysadmins, not just uh, your, your um, Windows admins, but in fact, your networking team, for example, we offer a course that is on Ansible automation for networking. And so that's one of the reasons we're really very, you know, behind the push towards Ansible is because there is this great need in IT organizations to be able to consolidate their automation efforts because it's not just the people who are administering the, the OS, the platform, who, who need to automate. It's every piece of that stack. And so I think there's just a lot of opportunity there for people to learn those skills and discover ways to actually add a lot of value to their organizations, which of course is very good for us as training organizations because I think people are going to need help getting there. Perfect. Cool. Well, you know, I know you guys are, are, are busy, busy folks. So, you know, Randy Russell, John Walter, thank you for joining us again. Randy, uh, welcome. Hope you'll join us again yep. sometime in the future. Thank you. Uh, thanks everyone for watching Tech Talk. Uh, I think we're supposed to say like, 
you know, subscribe, follow, share. I don't know. Is there a button? Mash right the button. Here. Yeah. Mash right the button here. right here. <laughs> yeah. We'll add these effects later. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you.